Hi everyone, I'm Nathan with the ebookreader.com. For this video, I'm going to give a review of the Onyx Books M96. This is a 9.7 inch ink e-reader. Um, it's got a SD card slot down here. That's the power button, uh, micro USB port, headphone jack, and this is a volume uh, volume buttons right there because there's this little tiny speaker hole in the back. Um, I'll show you some uh, audio stuff later. This back of this device has got like a soft texture. It's like an updated version of the Onyx M92 and the hardware is a lot nicer than the M92 was. It's got this sort of like solid piece that goes around and it just makes it feel more durable and uh, just higher quality. So uh, this device, like I said, it's got the 9.7 inch ink screen. Just to give you a comparison, this is the Onyx Books uh, T68. It's got a 6.8 inch screen. So this is another device that I just reviewed, obviously. They both have very similar uh, software, almost identical. Uh, the uh, M96 here has a different reader app for like PDFs and it works uh, really good for PDFs. I just finished the PDF video, so I'm not gonna talk about those in this one, um, but I'm gonna go ahead and show you all the ebook features, the different app features, because this device runs Android 4.0 and it can install Android apps. It comes with Google Play, so you can install a whole bunch of different reading apps here. I've installed a number of reading apps. You can see uh, several of these were already included on the device, but it can run a number of third-party apps like the Kindle app, the Google Books app. Moon Plus Reader is a really good app on this device. Okay, so this device has some buttons over here on the left side. You've got front and back page buttons. There's a menu button and a back button. The menu button actually has a picture of a home icon on it, so it's kind of confusing sometimes, but it, that's definitely the menu button. If you hold it, it actually refreshes the screen. Uh, so over here, there's like this little navigation wheel where you can navigate the little icon. You can see the icon moving on the screen. You can use this thing to turn pages. You can use it to navigate the entire device. And as you'll notice, I have this little stylus right here. This has an electromagnetic touch screen, so it actually doesn't work with your fingers when you press it. Uh, you need to use the stylus for the touch screen, so that's sort of a PDF device, and it works well for annotations and stuff like that, so uh, with a larger screen here. So I'm going to go ahead and give you guys a look at several different reading apps on here. Since Kindle's already loading up, let's go ahead and do that. Sometimes it's already loading, you just have to hit the refresh button. All right, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and show you just briefly that this app does indeed work on here. I already showed it in depth on the Onyx books, but let me go ahead and show it on here anyway. So you can use this little icon deal over here, this little nav wheel to turn pages. These actual page buttons aren't hardwired for it, so they don't do it, but uh, this right here will refresh the screen. Obviously, you can see with this huge ink reader, you get lots of text on the screen. It's really good for nice large text if you have vision problems. Uh, or if you can go all the way down to small text as well, but um, just the larger screen is more suited for larger text, I think. But you can go ahead and get really small text like that if you want. With the Kindle app, it does that weird sliding effect, so sometimes you need to refresh the screen. But the app does work. All the on-screen features and stuff do work as far as like uh, the notes, highlights, the dictionary. You can reference Wikipedia and Google. Uh, there's the different languages for the... Uh, Dictionary. So, well, we're speaking of dictionaries. Let's go ahead and show you, or uh, languages. Let's go ahead. That was a really crummy segue. I screwed it up. Well, anyway, let's go to the uh, settings menu and I'll show you what uh, languages this device supports. So, we can go up to the settings menu right here. If we go into language, so this device supports a number of languages. Right there. So it's got text-to-speech as well. I'll show you that in here in a second. Uh, just a few other things here in the settings menu. We've got DRM settings because this thing supports Adobe DRM if you want to get uh, Adobe EPUBs on here or Adobe uh, PDFs. Uh, we've also got, like I said, it runs Android 4.0. I'm not going to go into that right now. Uh, let's go ahead and show you some of the ebook features now. So this thing has a number of ebook apps pre-installed. So these are all basically the pre-installed ebook apps except for Moon Plus Reader. I added that one. But it comes with all of these as EPUB readers and they all have different features. So I'm just going to basically go over to the two main Onyx ones. Uh, I've shown the Onyx Reader one in depth in the books, but the books or the books T68, but for whatever reason, the T68 doesn't have the Onyx Neo Reader installed. Uh, so this one has a few different features. It's really good for PDFs. Uh, it has some good options for ebooks too. As you can see right here, uh, as far as layout goes, gives us a nice, good layout. We can actually modify the margins and the size of the text. You can just quickly change the size of the text using this button right here. I noticed there's a big jump in text with this particular app. Um, the other Onyx Reader app, it doesn't have that big of a jump between those sizes right there. It has more text sizes I've, I've noticed. Uh, so this app has the usual, you know, all the on-screen features. If you hold down on something, you get that usual on-screen copy, highlight, notes, dictionary. So this device uses Quick Dictionary. I'm not really a fan of it, to be honest with you, but it's all right. 
um, you opens up this separate window here for the app and there's a whole bunch of different uh, downloads you can do so they're always like English translated to something which is kind of weird I don't really know why there's not just a straight English dictionary but that's just how that quick dictionary works so as far as the um, on-screen features for menu here we've got the margin settings I noticed there isn't any line spacing settings with this particular app uh, we do have the margin settings you can see right there it can go super huge super small um, we've got the usual font options. What's cool about this particular app over the Onyx app is that it does have the bold and um, you can adjust the bold levels but uh, I sort of think the first level is probably the best option because it keeps most of the clarity of the text. Some of the um, levels it starts to just get the text all blocky looking but so it's been a long time since I reviewed a 9.7 inch ink e-reader not since the Onyx 92, M92, like a couple years ago, and I forgot how much I really like these devices. It's a really cool uh, type of e-reader having a larger screen size like that, so, I mean, it's a huge difference than, like, the Kindle Paperwhite with a 6-inch screen right here. So, I mean, obviously, we're talking, like, hardcover versus paper book. It's a lot different uh, size. Just a huge difference with the amount of text on the screen. Um, it's, I really like just how the text looks on the screen. I mean, it's not a really high-resolution screen, like something you're going to get on the Kindles and stuff. It doesn't have the, as high DPI, but when you're using uh, larger fonts like this, it doesn't matter. I mean, if you're going to go really tiny fonts, I mean, you're going to notice that it's not quite as sharp and clear as those higher resolution e-readers, but I don't know why you would use such tiny fonts on a large screen like this. I mean, I always seem to be using larger fonts than I would use on the Kindle normally just because there's so much more screen real estate there. Uh, and I've also, uh, this device, it doesn't have a front light. As you see when I turn out the light, um, so it, I guess they haven't perfected uh, front lights for 9.7 inch e-readers yet so as you can tell it's quite a bit different than with the Kindle's front light full blast right here um, there's a lot of difference with the uh, night reading so I mean it really helps to have a light on the screen one thing uh, I've observed though is with the larger screen it just seems to have more reflectivity to it because there's a lot more of the background area so I don't know it doesn't really seem like not having a front light is that big of a deal because the text is still always pretty easy, easy to read even with the light off right there Let's go up the text size so you can see on the camera a little better. So yeah, I mean, I'm really liking this screen even though it's not like super high DPI like some of those newer smaller screens are. Looks really good, text is really nice and clear and dark. Okay, so like I was saying, you can open books in different uh, apps here and you can set the default if you want. Like the Onyx Reader app here, it had some different features like it has text-to-speech. Um, let me show you this, uh, like the fonts weren't as a huge jump either like when you're jumping from small to large, you can see there's a little bit more variation. So let's, this app, it just has some different features to it. Um, so it has the um, bold too. It kind of makes it a little bit blockier, but it still looks good. Um, I kind of like the look of the bold on the other app a little bit better, but it doesn't really, just personal preference really. We've got uh, the notes and highlights like always in here. You've got your own section for that. And I sometimes forget the table of contents is in there too. So we can just jump around with the table of contents right there. If you have this menu icon up and you tap right there, you can get the uh, page two number. So we can just hit a page and go to So there's some different shortcuts for that kind of stuff. We've got the uh, landscape mode, though. I don't really know why I'd really use it a whole lot on this big of a device, but you can if you want. Okay, so let's fire up text-to-speech. Let me give you a listen to how this works really quickly. She drifted out of hearing while the great Just the volume. something about a dance at the Bay of Bulls and a dead man in the foxhole. Harvey shuddered. He had seen the slove until Dex and the Savage Eyed crew. Kind of has odd pauses between senses. But the voice is really pleasant. You can actually modify the voice and the speed of text to speech up here in the settings. It was under that language section uh, again. Once again, you can go in there and modify the uh, text to speech right here, actually. So we got some different uh, speech rates. There's also some different uh, voices. This is an example of speech synthesis in English with Onyx DTS. So we got three different voices here. Let's also use the Pico DTS engine. Let's go ahead and try that really quick just to see how it compares to the speech rate of that other one. But this cuts 
sport was the Grand Bank the Triangle 250 miles on each side a waste of wallowing sea, clothed with dank fire. Yeah, the uh, Onyx voice was definitely a lot better. That one doesn't have the weird pauses between sentences though, so hmm, take your pick. Okay, so this is the home screen. You can also view your uh, books in the library here. They all get automatically added to the library view what the uh, device supports as far as formats. Um, we'll go ahead and sort these by, you can actually view these by tile cover if you want. I kind of like this view. Um, some different filtering options up there as well, but I'm going to go ahead and back out of here and show this other stuff. We've got the shop right here. This is the Artitech shop though, so this is like I think it's like a Polish store because it doesn't have, it doesn't seem to have like English language books, so I'm not going to really go into detail with this. Uh, we've got the storage right here. This is sort of like a basic file manager where you can go through the folders on your device. Uh, I actually recommend installing ES File Explorer because it has more advanced functionality. You can like move and delete stuff. It's just a lot easier. Um, so yeah, that's in the app section. You can, like I said, this uh, runs Android 4.0 and has a Play Store, so you can install like whatever apps you want to from Google over here. Uh, it just sort of depends on the individual apps, how they will render on this ink screen here, but I don't know, I've had pretty good luck so far, a lot of reading based, I forgot I'm uploading videos. Anything related to online right now isn't going to work because my internet's like totally clogged. So let's just go back here and I'll talk to you about some of these other apps that I have installed. Uh, so yeah, ES File Explorer is definitely a must because then you can just go through your files and you can move stuff, delete stuff, create file folders. Um, it definitely makes it a lot easier navigating the uh, structure with the Android operating system. So yeah, you just got all your different sections in here. Like if you download something with the browser, you need to go to your download section to get to it. Uh, speaking of browser, uh, I'm not going to be able to show it to you on this video. Maybe I'll do a separate video. Like I said, I'm uh, uploading videos right now and my internet is totally, totally bogged down. Uh, so let me go ahead and show you. I like using Nova Launcher. Sometimes you can set this up as an alternate home screen. So if you didn't want to use that home screen they have set up for you, you can actually go ahead and set it up through like a typical Android home screen uh, using Nova Launcher. It takes quite a bit of setting up because you need to get rid of like the animations. You need to get a white background like I have set up right here. And it just makes things look a lot better if you want to use this option. And then you can have, uh, have it set to go to that when you hit the home screen, which I kind of forgot I didn't, so now we're back here again. Um, yeah, but then you can also set like uh, icons for individual books on here. You can have folders. Uh, there's different things you can do with the Android options. And there's another way to get to the real settings menu in here. So uh, with that other option, with the other settings menu I was showing you before, it's sort of like a truncated version of the uh, Android settings menu. You can get to like the full Android settings menu from the settings in the Nova launcher. So you can get some more options set through there. So, Alright, so this device, it comes with a web browser. It comes with calculator app, a calendar app. Um, it's pretty cool on the e screen. You can get like a view, view of the full month. You can add different tasks to this, your events to this if you'd like. Just the regular, typical Android calendar. We've got a clock there. Uh, the color wallpaper is how you get a good, nice white background here. That's a good app to install if you want to use this setup. I got a note app installed. Comixology. Uh, so, this is a, a comic app. It works well on Ink e Reader, surprisingly well. Uh, I reviewed it on a couple other devices, and it works well on this device as well. Uh, it's pretty cool with the large screen, the way you get uh, like the full page view. Let me go ahead and switch over to the reading view here. Alright, so this is a look at the Comixology app in action on the Onyx M96 here. I really like how you get the full screen view. You don't need to use the guided view at all because it's so easy to read just with the regular view. I mean, the balloons are nice and easy to read this way, so you really don't need to use the scrolling or the zooming in at all. So you can just go with full page mode. It's pretty nice. The only thing about this app is, of course, like the page buttons don't work because they're not coded for it. So you do have to use the touch screen to turn pages. Just have to tap it is all, though. All right, so some other apps that work well on here. Dropbox, uh, Feedly works well on here. So uh, uh, Play Books. Um, for some reason, I've been having more luck with the Onyx M96 running some of these apps than I did with the T68. The T68 seemed a little more crash prone for some reason. Uh, I had more issues with apps just closing randomly. I've really had no problems at all on the M96 yet. I mean, everything seems to be working nice and smooth. You load up the Google Books app. I remember other times I would have issues with it on the T90 or T68, but I'm not having any issues with it on the M96. I mean, everything's working okay. It's not causing it to close or shut the device down at all. So, I mean, it's pretty cool to actually have some 
a device that you can install alternate reading apps on. You can have all these different options. So you got the Kindles and you can have your Google Books on here. But I really just sort of like that built-in reading app, just sort of the way everything's laid out. So I mean with Google Books and like Kobo, all those support Adobe EPUB. So you can set this up with your Adobe DRM account and then you can just read anything through the regular Onyx Reader app. So I mean you can get the more uh, the page buttons working and you can get the uh, really nice clear looking text without the uh, partial refresh that never fully refreshes in the app so I mean it's just sort of one of those things with the ink okay so I'm gonna wrap up this video review right here uh, before it gets way too long uh, check out ebookreader.com for some additional info like I said I already uploaded a PDF review and I can do some other individual reviews if you guys have any requests let me know uh, thank you for watching and you guys have a good day